All right, here we are with Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs, uh, written, um, well, actually, it's been retold by Mo Willems, which is the uh, Pigeons Don't Drive Buses, that same author. Once upon a time, there were three dinosaurs, Papa Dinosaur, Mama Dinosaur, and some other dinosaur who happened to be visiting from Norway. One day, for no particular reason, the three dinosaurs made up their beds, positioned their chairs just so, and cooked three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding at varying temperatures. Oh boy, said Papa Dinosaur in his loud, booming voice. It is finally time to leave and go to the, uh, someplace else. <laughs> yes, continued Mama Dinosaur. I sure hope no innocent little succulent child happens by our unlocked home while we are, uh, uh, someplace else. The other dinosaur made a loud noise that sounded like a big evil laugh, but was probably just a polite Norwegian expression. The three dinosaurs went someplace else and were definitely not hiding in the woods waiting for an unsuspecting kid to come by. Sure enough, five minutes later, a poorly supervised little girl named Goldilocks came traipsing along. Just then, the force boomed with what could have been a dinosaur yelling, Gotcha! But I'm pretty sure it was just the wind. The loud noise was immediately followed by another loud noise that sounded kind of like, Be patient, Papa Dinosaur, the trap is not yet sprung. But that could have been a falling rock or a squirrel. Either way, Goldilocks was not the type of little girl who listened to anyone or anything. For example, Goldilocks never listened to warnings about the dangers of barging into strange, enormous houses. So as soon as Goldilocks came across a strange, enormous house, she barged right in. Very rude. Inside, Goldilocks immediately smelled three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding. Mmm, said Goldilocks. That chocolate pudding smells delicious. If only I could get all the way to the top of that counter. Then Goldilocks noticed a very tall ladder that just happened to be there and certainly wasn't left on purpose. Goldilocks climbed up the ladder and found herself face to face with three gigantic bowls of chocolate pudding. The first bowl of chocolate pudding was too hot. But Goldilocks ate it anyway because, hey, it's chocolate pudding, right? The second bowl of chocolate pudding was too cold, but who cares about the temperature when you've got a big bowl of chocolate pudding? Not her. The third bowl of chocolate pudding was just right, but Goldilocks was on a roll up by now and she hardly noticed. Soon, Goldilocks was stuffed like one of those delicious chocolate-filled little girl bonbons which, by the way, are totally not the favorite thing in the whole wide world for hungry dinosaurs. Tired and groggy, Goldilocks noticed three chairs in the living room. So she climbed down the ladder and walked out of the kitchen. The first chair, too tall. The second chair was too tall. But the third chair was too tall. Goldilocks wasn't going to climb that high just to sit in some chair. So she hiked on over to the bedroom. When she got there, Goldilocks noticed that the beds were also gigantically big. What is going on around here? Groaned the exhausted girl. The bears that live here must be nuts. So she thinks bears live there. Just then the room filled with a loud booming noise that was either a passing truck or a dinosaur gloating. A few minutes more and she'll be asleep. Delicious chocolate-filled little girl bonbons are even yummier when they're rested. Even a little girl who never listens to anyone or anything had to hear that. Goldilocks took a minute to stop and think, which was longer than she was used to stopping and thinking. Hey, she told herself, this isn't some bear's house. This is some dinosaur's house! Say what you like about Goldilocks, but she was no fool. As quickly as she could, she ran out the back door and got out of there. Just then, a loud plane flew by, which sounded pretty much like a trio of dinosaurs yelling, Now! Or charge! Or the Norwegian expression for Chewy Bonbon Time. 
Suddenly, and completely coincidentally, the three dinosaurs rushed through the front door. But they were too late. Goldilocks was gone, and all that was left in the house were three disappointed dinosaurs. And the moral is, if you ever find yourself in the wrong story, leave. And the moral for dinosaurs is, lock the back door. The end. So you can compare that story to the three snow bears or Goldilocks and the three bears. The final story that I'm going to read to you that you could use to compare is going to be Goldilocks and the three pandas. 